Hello everyone. Today I'm in the northwest of Edinburgh in a little village called Cramond. Now Cramond is possibly one of the most historical places in Edinburgh, um, dating back maybe 10,000 years. So I'm going to take you around the Old Kirk. I'm going to take you out to Cramond Island. I'm going to show you Cramond House, Cramond Tower, up the River Ammon to the old iron mills and then we're going to finish at the statue of King James V who was attacked in 1532. So, uh, my location right now is Cramond Kirk. Now, this stunning looking kirk dates back to the 600s. Now, not in its original style. So if you look to the left, you'll see a tower that was built in the 1300s. And the castellated turret on top was added in the 1800s. You can see it's different stone. And then the church to the right hand side of the tower was built in 1656. Now the whole thing sits on the foundations of a church built in the six, 600s. So quite, I've been a church here for quite some time. And where we're actually standing is on the site of the old Roman camp, which is just, some of the foundations is just outside the uh, the kirk so i'm going to show you that right now for children but like i said 10,000 years of history here quite incredible um and the roman occupation around about 140 ad 142 uh, there was a support this was just on the left here is the old roman fort and this would have been to like a garrison of maybe 600 men on a six acre site you can still see some of the original walls here, dating back 2,000 years. Quite incredible. Barracks over there. Not much to see, but you can see the foundations and the sort of scale of the place. So we're just looking at the side of uh, Cramond House, built in the 1700s by the Turfican family. Quite a splendid looking place. And sitting right next to it is Cramond Tower. This stunning looking house, tower house, was built in the, I think it was the 13 or 1400s. Look at this. If you googled Scottish old house, that's what would come up. Isn't that absolutely majestic? Gorgeous. So now I'm going to head down out of here and I'm going to head down to Cramond Foreshore and I'm going to walk across to Cramond Island and uh, you're in for a treat there. It's more recent history across there, uh, more more rec more obvious recent history like World War One and Two, uh, but still spectacular. So I'm just going to head in this direction and turn right at the brown side. coast. But already you're starting to see the delightful ancient village of Cramond. And on the right hand side there, we have the beautiful Cramond Inn. Excellent pub, pub grub. Lovely to go for a nice wee walk on a Saturday or a Sunday, go in and get a pub lunch. So we're starting the walk across the causeway here and uh, definitely recommend decent footwear and rubbish clothes because it can get a bit mucky. I've got my walking boots on. So I'm now on the causeway and it's approximately a mile walk uh, from start to finish. And on the right hand side there, you can see the uh, teeth, concrete teeth. And that was uh, to stop attack in the world wars, the two world wars uh, from German boats. And if you see the slots, in the um in the the side of it that would have been filled up with concrete see like there to provide a proper barrier so as we approach the island only a few meters away now you can start to see the uh, first gun tower towers there's two of them up there and what we're going to do is going to walk through the middle of the island and then I'm going to come back by the west side of the island. There's a wee rocky path that you can come round. So here we have the first gun tower. Wow, it's cool. What an amazing view. Obviously we'd have to have an amazing view, but 
That's incredible. A wee flight of steps here. Right. Oh wow, look at that. That's so cool. Ah, oh, this looks quite easy. <laughs> a broken step there, and we're in. Lots of graffiti. People have been sleeping out here. Oh wow. So this would all have been shielded up and guns sticking out the side. What a tremendous view. Wow. So I've just climbed this little rocky uh, hill in the middle of the island here. And the view is absolutely wonderful. Now you can see that said uh, Rosebury House straight ahead. Don't know if that picks it up. And then Barnbugle Castle. And then in the distance you can quite clearly see the Fourth Rail Bridge and the Queen's Ferry Crossing. And I can see the Fourth Road Bridge as well. And then we're going across to uh, that looks like Inverkeething and the Ockles in the distance, Dalgetty Bay. And then as we're looking across here, right over Silver Nows, on the south, uh, on the north of Edinburgh, over to the Granton Flats, Arthur's Seat in the distance, and the gas terminal, right out to the Port of Leith, where all those high, high rise flats are. Isn't that spectacular? Oh, and the Pentland, Pentland Hills in the distance. So as we're coming through the trees here, there's the remains of a wee cottage here. Now this was in use as a holiday cottage until about 1900, 1904 I think and there's the, the old doorway there, look let's go inside and this was owned by the the uh, Lord Rosebery ah, I see, look a wee wall there an old fireplace or a stove or something like that so cool a wee room here oh, it's quite a decent size so there's a wall over there a doorway there as well and there, what is a big place what an absolute waste imagine the money you could charge to rent this out there's a, over by those trees there's a wall going right along there God, this is fascinating I'm in another wee room here and another room God, it's huge maybe that was a garden, who knows I need to do further research on this. There's another wee room there. Oi! And another room. So I'm now on the north of the island and I'm looking across to Inch Mickery. Now that was called Battleship Island. You know there's a couple of chimneys in the middle. It's supposed to look like a battleship to fool the Germans in the World Wars. And then to the left of that you've got Mind you, I'm not sure who would fall for that. Uh, and then, just to the left of that, you have a beautiful little lighthouse. And then across there, I don't know if the camera can pick it up, you've got Inchcombe Abbey. Now that dates back to the 1200s. And it's round about Burnt Island. The little village of Burnt Island. And then, looking down here, we have the gun towers. Look at that. It's spectacular. And just coming into one here, look at this. Remarkably intact. I don't normally like graffiti, but I quite enjoy that. Oh, look, there's a wee hole. So this is what the home guard would have seen. This is what the original iron works there. Look at that. Wow, what a view. Actually, I can hear a plane. A plane coming in. Yep, look. Amazing. I've got my binoculars with me. I'm going to actually have a look. It appears to be dozens of uh, little gun towers on Inch Mickery Island. What a fascinating place. Yep, I'm going to get the binoculars out now. So I've done the gun towers now, I'm going to go around this west side of the island and there's 
ruins everywhere. Absolutely cool. Soundproof future Scotland. It's amazing what fun some folk put as graffiti. Oh, there's a wee flight of steps here. Yeah, so this is the this is coming round the west side of it. And there's another wee path going up there. Isn't that cool? So I'm gonna come down here and walk along the beach. So look at these. Must be for anchoring boats. That's so smart. That's definitely what it's for. Huge concrete blocks just to put the big chains on the side, look. Amazing. So, heading back to the causeway now. The uh, time is about 10.15. Plenty of time to get across. Tide doesn't start coming until 11.35, so been quite sensible. And as you can, as we approach the first gun tower that we saw, you can start to see the teeth of the causeway going right across. And it's nice to see it from this angle here. And then you can see right across the sands, up to the fourth bridge. It's quite tempting to walk right across the Dalmeny house, but <laughs> you don't know what dangers lie there. It could be quicksand or anything like that. So I'm gonna walk straight back across the causeway and keep it sensible. So now we're just about back on dry land again, and I'll quickly spin round, see where we've come from. There, that's the one mile walk out to Cramond Island. Wonderful walk. Now I'm gonna head up the side of the River Amund, which is a stunning walk in itself. And we'll come to the old iron mills on the way, amongst other things, obviously. So walking up the River Amund, where we can see the Cramond Bistro on the left-hand side here. It's part of the Cramond village. And uh, there's the maltings on the left-hand side there. And just further up on the right-hand side, a few years ago, the two guys found a big rock sticking out the water. Morning, David. It's <laughs> all right, son. <laughs> Can't go anywhere without folk recognising me. And just coming up on the right-hand side here, uh, you can see this little sign here, and it's telling us about the lioness of Cramond. And basically, it was a huge rock. It's now in um, the Museum of Edinburgh. And it was a huge rock, and it's basically this thing here. And it's in perfect condition. It's basically a lion eating a, looks like a Scottish, a Scottish soldier, maybe the Caledonii, as they call it. And that was them actually recovering it there. Fascinating. And it was discovered just down there. There's an old chain down there in the water. And the swans. And then you look across, you can see that cottage I was talking about. That's on the Dalmeny estate. You used to be able to get a boat across from here. It cost about 50 pence. You could get the boat across and then you could walk around the Dalmeny estate. Nowadays you've got to go up to Cram and Brig and cross from there. Now, the reason for uh, the Romans actually camping here was the proximity to this river. And this place made a natural harbour for their boats. And there's still evidence of Roman occupation down here. It's absolutely wonderful. And uh, all the way up the up the river, uh, from about the 1100s onwards, there was uh, like grain mills, cockle mills, iron mills. And further up, we're going to actually see um, the remnants of a, of a ruinous iron mill called Ferrafar. And that was owned by the Caddell family who had a really successful business up until the early to mid 1800s and uh, they eventually couldn't compete with Falkirk who had much more powerful iron mills there and the, because of the strength of the River Amund didn't flow as, didn't generate enough power to uh, turn their wheels so they couldn't work at the same capacity as they could in Falkirk. So this here is the walled garden, that's a cracking cafe normally, that's on the site of an old mill as well. And then there's a little path that splits up to the right here. Gives you a lovely view of the River Amund. 
and a wee waterfall coming up or a rapids look at that, isn't it gorgeous? spectacular so after about a 10 minute walk along the river Amund I've come to the old iron mill the Fairafar iron mills what a splendid building this dates back to the 1700s ah, here's an information board here the ruined walls here are all that's left of Fairafar mill from 1770 it was at the heart of Kramen's industrial revolution ship ships brought iron from Russia and Sweden to Cockle mill just downstream where it was refined and cut into strips at Fairafar the walls reflected the fierce glow of the furnace and rang with the sound of a trip, a great trip and fascinating, let's have a look and incidentally you can see the, the weir through the wall there, the waterfall but we'll come to that in a second, look at this there's the upper floor there quite incredible built in red sandstone I think, you can see the scorch marks on the walls amazing look at this spectacular waterfall I'm scared to call it a waterfall, is that a weir or a waterfall? I don't know but on the right hand side you'll see a sort of modern construction and that's actually a fish ladder amazing gorgeous and then I suppose that would have turned a wheel on the side of this building here let's see if there's a remnants of the old wheel can't really see probably too dangerous I'll check that out later because I can't see anything just yet <laughs> isn't that spectacular I'm going to walk further up the river Amund I'm going to head to uh, Jock Howison's house and past some old mills as well just noticed this tree here it's been turned into, looks like a whale <laughs> look at that isn't that pretty? now I'm going to go down these steps and I'm going to show you our, an old ruin on my left there we go, it's a ruined farm cottage and on the right hand side we have the old Cramond Brig that was built round about 1500 and was the main bridge uh, across the River Amund nowadays there's that concrete monstrosity up there that's the Cramond Brig that everyone flies over at 60 miles an hour unless the speed cameras are so the story goes so Cramond Brig is here and this is the home of Jock Howison who was a farmer in these parts and the story goes that King James V who used to walk about dressed in disguise he used to dress in ordinary clothes and his, his name was the good man of Ballingich now Ballingich is a little uh, just outside Stirling Castle and um, Gidman I think means farmer so he was like the farmer of Ballingich anyway, he was I'm digressing he was crossing the River Almond, just there and Jock Howison was in his house and he heard a kerfuffle which is like a disturbance and um, he went across and came to the man's aid and he um, rescued him from attackers <clears throat> now, Jock Howison didn't realise he was the, the king because he was dressed in ordinary clothes and um, the following day he was sent for he was sent for and he uh, was invited down to Holyrood Palace and um, he was uh, the story goes that he was given the lands around here in perpetuity so just for, for saving the king's life he was granted the lands round about here just because of the disturbance on that bridge now it was 1532 now on the other side of that bridge there's a little statue to King James V I'm going to go and find it so it was a reasonable size maybe it was maybe it was three cottages I don't know but that's uh, that's how it looks there and there was a little flight of steps 
taking us up. Now I'm going to have to cross the busy A90 to get to this little statue and that's where I'll end the tour. Goodness knows how old those steps are. <laughs> so just along this little alleyway here there's a little courtyard. I'm not really meant to go in because it's private property. But this is where the statue is and it's a statue of King James V getting attacked by some vagabonds, some robbers. Last time I came here, a wee woman came running out shouting, Get off my land! But this is it here. So that's King James on his horse, and that is his attackers at the bottom there. Not a lot of people know that's here. 1532. Spectacular. Let's have a little walk up to it. There we go. I'll get out before I get shouted at. King James not looking too happy and a broken dagger. Right, let's get out of here. <laughs> so folks, hope you enjoyed my tour of Cramond, Cramond Island, the River Amund and the Jock Howison's farm. Uh, thanks very much for watching. Please, please subscribe to my channel. It would mean the world to me and uh, makes things better for me. So thanks very much for watching and catch you next time. Thank you.